In this video, we're going to talk about vectors, and more precisely, vectors and their linear combinations. So, before entering into linear algebra, which is really about matrices and their properties, but just so you don't know, a vector is basically an arrow. It's a quantity that has both a magnitude and a direction. So in the 2D plane, a vector has a starting point and an ending point. It doesn't have to start from the origin. It basically indicates the journey from the starting point to the ending point. That's it. That's what a vector does. And it's this very simple property of vectors that makes them so special. But let's leave this aside and let's talk about algebra using vectors. So first of all, in 2D, we have to recognize that we have two fundamental operations for vectors. We have addition and we have scalar multiplication. Combining these two operations give us a linear combination. So first, in algebraic terms, let's define what a column vector is. A column vector, v, with this arrow on top, is equal to v1, v2, in two dimensions. And notice that, um, in very general terms, this v can go on forever, but I don't like to start like that in linear algebra. I want to keep this simple and as closely tied to our previous mathematical experience as possible. So let's focus on two components. And talking about components, we define v1 to be the first component and v2 to be the second component. So if you're a programmer and you're zero indexed, then you probably have to switch to one index for math. That's it, that's v in two dimensions. And that's how we define a vector. What about vector addition? How do we add vectors? So say we have vectors v and w and we are still in two dimensions. So we have v1, v2 plus w1, w2. This is very simple. This is simply v1 plus w1 and v2 plus w2. It's basically the first component of v plus the first component of w and the second component is the first component of v and plus the second component of w. That's it. So it's basically this first row plus together and the second row plus together. Nothing so complicated. And what about what is a scalar multiplication? So this is basically C times V1, V2, which is equal to C, V1, C, V2. So it's kind of like a vector distributive property where we distribute the C in each component. All right, so these are the basic definitions we need. And also let's just note that there's this commutativity of vector addition, V plus W, is equal to w plus v and you can prove that basically by listing out that v plus w1 and v2 plus w2 that is equal to w1 plus v1 and w2 plus v2 and these components definitely satisfy the commutative property and hence proved and there's four special linear combinations we have to first talk about so the linear combination is defined as follows. So what is a linear combination? A linear combination is a combination of vector addition and scalar multiplication. So we can define it as this, CV plus DW. So we have a scalar multiple of V, a scalar multiple of W added together. So it's basically multiplication and addition combined together. And this is the fundamental operation that we'll be observing in linear algebra. So there's four special types of linear combinations. We have the sum linear combination, which is V plus W. It's basically a linear combination with C and D equal to one. We have the difference linear combination, which is the first vector minus the second vector. We have the zero linear combination, which is zero times V plus zero times w, which always yields the zero vector. And we write the zero vector as a zero with an arrow on top. And last of all, we have a scalar multiple linear combination, which is basically a scalar multiple of one vector plus zero times another vector, which simply yields C, V. All right, so these are the basic linear combinations that we'll be observing in this video. So before we dive into what vectors are and their properties, I want to just talk about how we can use a shorthand to denote vectors. So v1, v2, we can write this as using angular brackets, v1, v2. That's basically how I got taught. 
uh, you might look at some people and they might write v1 v2 i don't really like this notation because i think it resembles a coordinate too much and vectors as i said before are not similar to coordinates they're completely different although they do have some similar points because vectors are basically defined to be the difference between two coordinates all right um enough of that let's just put this as an aside okay so let's talk about vector addition in a geometric sense geometrically say we have a graph and we have a vector v and we have a vector w let's make this vector straight too vector addition is basically moving this vector on top of w which yields v plus w and now v plus w is this particular vector that i'm going to highlight in blue notice that vectors are straight lines instead of curved or a combination of two paths they're all straight so you can think of them as the shortest path from one point to another so this is v plus w and notice this creates a parallelogram if we combine all these vectors as a parallelogram then we get this and notice that v plus w this blue vector is the diagonal of this parallelogram so basically if we add two vectors together we yield the diagonal of a parallelogram and that is very useful because now we know that the sum of two vectors geometrically resemble the diagonal of a parallelogram so this means that we can give a meaning to our sum linear combination and what about a difference combination difference well for the difference notice let's see if we start from w over here let's say we start from w and we go towards this path what is this path well this path is actually negative w because we're going to the opposite direction of the normal w which points in this direction and after we go over here which is at the origin let's go vector v up so we're going a v up so the resultant vector is this vector and i'm going to highlight this in red to distinguish all right so this red vector is in fact negative w plus v which is v minus w oh we deduced another thing the diagonal of this parallelogram the second diagonal is in fact the difference linear combinations of two vectors all right and thus we can write a property the sum of two vectors implies one diagonal of a parallelogram spanned by these two vectors i.e these two vectors form the sides of a parallelogram all right and v minus w is also a diagonal which is the other diagonal all right and right now in this moment you already see the properties of vectors in fact we can already see that how the linear combinations yield very specific properties in vectors right the sum vectors uh, yield the diagonal of a parallelogram in the geometric terms and the difference of two vectors are another diagonal of the parallelogram so using this we can directly imagine it in our heads which is much more useful than trying to imagine numbers in our heads okay and finally i just want to talk about the geometric interpretation of linear combinations so over here we had special linear combinations but what about very general linear combinations what about we only consider the combination cu where c is a real number well cu where u is a vector this yields let's see if we have a graph let's use a more vibrant color which is white if we have a vector u and let's scale it up using all different vectors so if we scale this up then it might go over here it might go over here uh this is not straight but you get the idea if we scale it up then we get all this line what about if we scale this down or if we use a negative number then we obtain the vectors here 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 and we obtain vectors in the opposite direction so if we multiply u by all of the different real numbers that we possibly have which is infinite then we get a straight line so cu yields a straight line and okay what about cu plus dv what does this yield geometrically well in fact if we have cu and dv we actually have a plane and consider this on the xy graph again 
well, we have a vector u and we have a vector v. And notice that v cannot be a scalar multiple of u because or else they'll overlap and everything will turn out to be incorrect. So u and v are what we call linearly independent vectors, i.e. they are not um, part of one another. So if we have these two vectors and we make v this line and we make u this line, then we actually yield a plane. Why? Because notice that we can add u on any part of v. We can add u on any part of v and we can add v on any part of u. So if we add u and v all together, then all we have is a plane, a beautiful plane. It's getting a bit messy, sorry. I'm just trying to show you that um, linear combinations are actually really powerful because they give us all of the combinations of vectors and they yield a surface, basically. They yield a 2D space. And using the same analogy, what about cu plus dv plus, let's add another vector, ew. E is not the Euler's number. This actually yields, so a line is 1D, a plane is 2D, so this yields a space, which is 3D. Fantastic. So that's it, basically. These are the geometric interpretations of linear combinations. And the vectors have to be linearly independent, so they must be pointing in different directions. All right, so basically that's it. These are all the things you need to know about the basics of vectors and the basics of linear combinations. And using these properties, what we'll do in the next video is we're going to explore the dot product and the cross product. And we're going to talk about how dot products are related to length and how we can use precise definitions of the dot products to derive more interesting properties of vectors. And we're actually going to prove the arithmetic mean and geometric mean inequality, which is a very widely used inequality in the mathematical community. So thank you for listening, and I wish to see you in the next lecture.